In this video, we will talk about dimension and rank. So first, recall that a basis is a set of vectors that are spanning the subspace, and also the vectors are linearly independent. So why care about these two properties? Well, having these two properties gives us a coordinate system with respect to a particular basis. So here's an example. Let's let our subspace be R2, this chalkboard, and let's say we're just given a vector, V. Well, how can we describe what V is? Remember, a vector is just a direction and a magnitude. But to describe this vector, we need a coordinate system. So suppose we have V these two vectors e1 and e2. Well, it's easy to see that they are linearly independent and that they also span r2. So e1 and e2 form a basis. And we can see that to get v, we go one unit in the direction of e1 and one unit in the direction of e2. So under this basis, we can describe the vector v as the vector 1, 1. And we'll use column vectors. So this b1 stands for this basis, e1, e2. And this will be our our notation and we know that this is the only way to describe v suppose there were two ways to describe the same vector let's say a e1 plus b e1 is the same vector as c e1 plus d e2 well if we subtract these over then we have a minus c equals e1 plus b minus d e2 equals zero but e1 and e2 are linearly independent so the only solution to this homogeneous equation is if a minus c is zero and b minus d is zero and so we get that a equals c and b equals d. So the representation of these vectors under this basis is unique. And we need the fact that they're spanning so that we can take any vector in the span and describe it as a linear combination. So a basis gives us a way to describe our vector. In other words, it gives us a coordinate system. Now you can have more than one coordinate system in a subspace. For example, instead of using this basis, perhaps we can use this. Consider the two vectors f1 and f2. It's pretty straightforward that they're linearly independent vectors and also that they span r2. In this coordinate system however to describe the vector v we have that we would need to go two units in the f1 direction and then we don't want to go any units in the f2 direction. So v is given as a linear combination 2 times f1 plus 0 times f2. So under this new basis we would describe v as the vector 2 0 but in the b2 basis. The point in having multiple bases is that sometimes computation is easier to do in one basis over the other depending on the vector. Now it can be established that if you have two different bases of the same subspace then they must contain the same number of vectors. So this leads us to the definition of a dimension of a subspace. The dimension of the subspace is the number of vectors in a basis. And we have another terminology that will pop up, something called the rank of a matrix, which is the dimension dimension of the column space of the matrix. So suppose A is this matrix, then the rank is by definition the dimension of the column space. And in a previous video, we discussed how to find the basis of a column space. It boils down to just locating the pivot columns. So we have two pivot columns. This will form our basis. And so in this case, the rank is two. And if you're given a general matrix that it's not in such a nice form, well, then you would first have to convert it into its echelon form to locate the pivot column. And from this, we notice that the remaining columns will correspond to free variable columns. So the dimension of the null space will be just a leftover, in this case, two as well. In a previous video, we discussed how to find the basis for the null space, which was the solution to the homogeneous equation. But the number of linearly independent vectors that will span the null space was given by the number of the free variables it has. So that leads us to the following theorem called the rank theorem. So if a matrix A has n columns, then the dimension of the column space or the rank plus the dimension of the null space is equal to A. This is just saying that your columns are either pivot columns or free variable columns. And when you add them together, you get all the columns. We also have the basis theorem, which will be proved possibly later, <laughs> that if you have a p-dimensional subspace and you have p many linearly independent vectors, then they have to be spanning. Also, the other way is true that in a p-dimensional subspace, if you have p vectors that span, well, then they also form a basis because they must be linearly independent. And from this, this gives us a little bit more extension on the invertible matrix theorem given here, which is more or less just a restatement of what we just discussed, right? now or an application of it.